Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome to a brand new tour series here on the channel. You find me today in northern Tuscany in the Mugello region. So welcome to a brand new tour on the channel. Really excited to be back out riding in Italy again. Uh, I'm out with Tuscany Motorcycle Tours on what is a little bit of a damp day. I'm just putting my arm up, by the way, to signal that there's a speed camera just here to the riders behind me. Something that we're doing on this trip, which is quite clever. Anyway, I'm out here for the week. It's a little bit damp today, but that's not dampening our spirits because the scenery is amazing. The roads are incredible here, and I cannot wait to show you some of the things on this tour. It's a little bit different, this one. Different in that we're staying in the same location every night. We're staying in an amazing villa, which I'll show you in a second. We've got an in-house chef, so all the food is provided. We're on incredible bikes. I'm on a BMW RT, I'll talk about that more later. And we're set for what's called the total Tuscan experience. So uh, we're gonna be riding out each day from the villa to different parts of Tuscany. I cannot wait. Anyway, stick around, stay tuned. Let's see what the tour brings us. So I last rode in Tuscany about four years ago with the Tuscany Motorcycle Tours, that's who I'm back out here again with. Adrian is up ahead on the lead GS. And then behind me, I've got about another six bikes. There are actually about 10 bikes in total on the trip. Most of the riders are couples. I think there are uh, two or three of us that are riding singly. Mrs. Flyer is here actually. She's riding on the back of Adrian's bike. The reason for that is not because she hates riding with me. Clearly she doesn't, but because I don't actually have a top box on this bike and she locks the security of a top box, so Adrian kindly offered to take her on his GS that does have a top box. So that's what that's all about. We've been riding so far today for, I don't know, about an hour, something like that. And uh, doing this, this piece of road, which I think is the Futa Pass. It's a well-known uh, biking spot. We're stuck behind a little bit of traffic at the moment and it has been a bit damp, so it's not an ideal day to be doing this really, but uh, nonetheless, it's still beautiful. And it's just nice to be back out on the bike again. So I said I'd show you around the villa that we're staying in. One of the things that I absolutely love about this tour is the fact that we are staying in the same place every night. So we don't have to carry our stuff with us on the bike. We leave it all here at the villa. This is the villa. It's a beautiful place. Let me give you a quick look round. So this is where the bikes are kept for the tour of an evening under this incredible vine. There is an amazing garden set up here, as you can see. There's an undercover bit for al fresco eating when the weather is um, appropriate. And then there's another little bit there under that sail where we have drinks of an evening. I'll be uh, down there having a beer in a moment. Uh, incredible view as well. I'll just show you looking out here towards San Gimignano. How nice is that? And the classic cypress trees. The villa itself is an absolutely beautiful building. I don't know how old it is, but it's been really nicely done up inside, as you'll see. There's some cooking going on of our supper at the moment. It smells absolutely wonderful. It's a, I think it's like a wild boar stew that's being cooked in. I believe me in here, it smells lovely. Right, so this is the sort of main dining room that we eat breakfast in the mornings and uh, supper at night as well, depending on the weather, of course. The kitchen is through that way. I won't disturb them because they're preparing food at the moment. It smells absolutely divine. And then down this way, we've got uh, sort of shared living economy, a little living room here and uh, complete with TV. Nice little comfy nook here. Amazing staircase to all the rooms. And I'll show you our room later. All the rooms are much the same. Incredible features in here, like this archway. What's this, a visitor's book? Hmm, I haven't seen that. Anyway, so that's a flavour of what the villa's got to offer. It's absolutely an amazing place to stay. It's exclusively ours and, uh, well, it's been absolutely brilliant. So we've got all sorts of people on this tour with us. It's a real uh, mix. So we've got uh, a couple of Americans. We've got some, uh, a couple from Ecuador. We've got uh, a few Brits, of course. We've got a couple from New Zealand. So yeah, a real cornucopia from across the globe on this one. And uh, hopefully as the trip goes on, I'll introduce you to some of those as well. Some faces you might recognize as well. 
So this road we're on at the moment is uh, the Futa Pass, F-U-T-A, which uh, as I say is a favourite uh, motorcycling road in this Mugello region. I have ridden it before actually, it's a great twisty road and it's a great opportunity to just try out the RT a bit more. I have ridden RTs in the past, but I've never spent uh, a week on one before, not uh, doing the sort of mileages that we're going to be doing this week. So it's going to be a great chance to get to know this bike. This particular machine is a brand new 2023 machine. I haven't quite worked out what bells and whistles it's got. I think it's basically got all of them. It's certainly got the uh, up and down quick shifter on. See, it's got the SOS button and all that. So I assume it's got basically everything you can get with an RT. The beauty of it, of course, has got that grunty R1250 engine same as in the current GS it means you can pretty much be lazy with it on roads like this you can leave it in second or third and it just grunts its way around it's brilliant but at the end of this week it will be a good opportunity for me to sort of reassess how this compares to the Goldwing having you know toured on this properly so I thought I'd just show you some of the bikes that are uh, being used on the tour just for your interest. Let's start with the most important one, which is mine, of course. They're kept here overnight underneath this amazing, uh, sort of, well, it's a vine, a grapevine, basically, that's grown up. So this is the beast that I'm on, the mighty BMW RT. It's a brand new model. In fact, uh, it was no one had ridden it uh, until I rode it. So uh, it's had like no miles on the clock. I've now put a few on it, of course, but uh, what an absolute beast. 2023 model, all the bells and whistles. Very nice indeed. And a great chance to really uh, get to know the bike. So uh, yeah, that's the RT I'm on. Uh, and that bike actually had to be hired in because I think the uh, tour is so full. Um, Adrian ran out of bikes, so that's the one I'm on. And then the rest of these bikes are all owned by Adrian's rental company. So there's the Ducati Multistrada there, an amazing bike, always good in red. Of course, the vulnerable, venerable R1250 GS, the one with the shift cam, that looks, that's probably a couple of years old, maybe only a year old, I don't know, something like that. Over here, we've got a uh, 750 GS, uh, that one of the couples is riding, if you prefer the smaller bike. Uh, we've got what looks like a BMW, this is the R90, uh, this is the Urban GS, isn't it? The R90 Urban GS, a lovely bike, I haven't ridden one of those for a while. Another Multistrada, I think that's the 950. Uh, what else have we got down here? Another GS there. We've got the Motor Gutsy, is that the V75? I think it's the V75, isn't it? If you prefer, oh there we are, V7. Oh, the Stone one, actually, I haven't ridden that one yet. I've rode the... Uh, the blue version, very similar. So if you fancy a bit of V-twinage, classic Italian motorcycle, then that one's there. Another GS, as I mentioned that, and another Multistrada. So an absolute cornucopia of motorcycles to choose from. Everyone a winner. Well, some lovely views from up here. Showing the clouds a little bit low. In case you're wondering, we're recording this in the uh, middle of May. And, uh, I think this is quite unusual weather for this time of year actually. We've had a funny old start to uh, summer in Europe this year. And at the moment in Italy, it's not an awful lot different to at home where it's uh, a bit wetter than you'd expect. This RT is surprisingly agile through the corners though for a big old heavy bike. You can hustle it round, you really can. I'm following a Multistrada and I have no problems at all keeping up. That said, the Multi has got a passenger on board, so maybe I'm being a little bit unfair there. Right, we've continued to climb on the pass, and uh, well, we're sort of getting into the cloud now, <laughs> and it's got even more damp, so uh, it calls for a bit of rain mode on the RT. Just gonna wait for the others to catch us up, I think. Now, normally on a Sunday, which it is, this road would be teeming with bikers, but I'm guessing because of the weather today, the locals haven't bothered to come out. Right, we're regrouped. Yeah, the views off here, I'm sure, are absolutely stunning normally, but today, sadly, we're going to have to use our mind's eye to imagine them. Oh well, now you can do about the weather, is there? Okay, so we've come down from the pass now in the mountains. It's warmed up a little bit, it's 12 degrees now, it uh, got down to 8 degrees, rain has eased off a little bit. I've worked out how to use the heated grips and the seat, well actually Adrian told me and he changed the bike so it's in English rather than Italian so that's good. What we're doing now is looking for a lunch stop, we're heading into Bologna as I say, into uh, Borgo Panigale which may ring a bell for some of you because that's where the Ducati factory is and uh, there's actually a uh, cafe associated with, I think it's called the Scrambler Cafe, something like that, we're going to try and uh, 
see if we get some lunch in there so uh, hopefully that's the next stop all right folks well welcome to a very damp bologna we made it to the Ducati scrambler food factory it looks like this it's actually uh, it's about a 10 minute ride from the uh, Ducati factory itself but uh, looks a great stop uh, place to stop have something to eat and have a bit of a warm-up Definite scrambler theme. Pretty cool place. Right, I'm gonna get something to eat and warm up. So there's tagliatelle ragu as we're as we're in Bologna. Right, food has come now. I think hilariously. What we would call spaghetti bolognese, here in Bologna, where it was invented, they don't call bolognese. They call it... Ragu. And what's it like? Any good? I don't know. I'm trying well, it Go yet. for it. Go on then. Mm, Come on. Chomping away. Let's have a look. Your face will tell us what it's actually like. Good? All right, so an excellent stop there at the uh, Ducati Scrambler Food Factory. Recommended. Turned out the uh, bolognese that's not called bolognese here in Bologna. Very nice indeed. So what we're doing now is uh, riding up towards the Ducati factory, which apparently is uh, about 10, 15 minutes away. And uh, there's the Ducati museum there as well, which some of the guys want to have a look into. I won't actually record there. I've been to the museum before. I'll put a link in the corner of the video of my trip to the museum if you're interested in seeing that. Uh, and then we're basically just, because the time is getting on, we're then going to be blatting back on the motorway back to the villa so uh, checking the weather forecast it looks like tomorrow is going to be a nicer day so uh, we'll see you then well good morning folks and uh, welcome to day two of the tour here in beautiful Siena Tuscany I thought I'd just pop outside before we've had a spot of breakfast just to see what the weather's doing and to work out what sort of kit we need to wear today I think it might be a jeans day because the forecast is much better today uh, it's going to be it should be around about 20 degrees and uh, sunny hopefully but uh, just check out this view I'm looking at here How beautiful is that? Typical Tuscan cypress trees, that sort of game. Anyway, plan for today is to jump on the bikes. We're off to San Gimignano, uh, which I have been to before, actually. A beautiful town with what were kind of medieval skyscrapers. Then on to Volterra, another classic Tuscan town. And then we're off up into the mountains, I think, to see another uh, sort of medieval hamlet-type place, which I can't remember the name of, but I'm sure it'll be beautiful. Anyway, uh, time to get the uh, biking kit on, get on the bikes, and see what the day brings. Right, breakfast duly imbibed. Ready to roll. First challenge of the day under this amazing canopy with this big vine here. But there's a bit of a gravel driveway out of the villa, so uh, that always tests us at the start of the day. Looking forward to today. Makes all the difference when the sun shines, doesn't it? Should be a good one. Give the others a little bit of space, I think. Especially as uh, some of the guys are two up. rear brake is the order of the day. This is the extent of the off-roading that I want to be doing on an RT. Off-road indeed, I know, I know. Anyway, what a place, eh? Absolutely gorgeous spot here. What a mix of bikes here. So we've got a uh, BMW Urban GS there. Lots of GSs, a couple of Multistradas. Ducati Scrambler, all the uh, top quality motorcycles. And we're off to San Gimignano, cannot wait. It's been, uh, I've been to San Gimignano a few times. Always delivers, amazing place. It's been a bit, well, four years since I went before actually. The last time I came actually was with Adrian on that previous tour. If I remember it rightly, it's the, the place that has the world's best ice cream shop in fact there are two that claim to be the world's best anyway today may be a day to try on ice cream the uh, villa we're staying at is lo is ideally located because you can go out in different directions from there you can get to all these different uh, favorite places 
quite easily. And I have to say, it's very civilised not having to carry all your kit with you as well. Makes for much lighter bikes. Looks like I might be tailing Charlie today. So as you can see, we've actually got quite a big group with something like 10 bikes. And uh, normally 10 bikes with one leader, I would say is a bit too much. But the way this one's organized, we've actually got a tail end Charlie leader as well, Kiki behind me, you might be able to see on the 360 camera. He's following up at the rear end. He's in uh, contact with Adrian right up the front. So lets him know if we're losing anyone. And then if we get to a point that's particularly complicated, like we had some uh, off camber tight bends yesterday, then Kiki will shoot forward to the front of the group, stop the traffic at the bend and wave us all through. So it's actually a very, very civilised way of going about it. It works a treat. Similarly on roundabouts, when we were in uh, Bologna yesterday in some of the busy spots, we would nip forward, stop the traffic. He's getting a bit of a feeling of the power, I think. Uh, and let us all nip through, so it was great. So it actually works much better than you would think with this number of bikes. I don't think I've ever toured with this number of bikes before, but it actually, as I say, works all right. So there's a classic case of Kiki doing his thing, look, waving us through so we don't have to stop at this stoplight. Excellent, or stop line, I should say. Well, how beautiful is this? Some olive groves, I think, on my right, by the looks of it. Vineyards to my left. Absolutely stunning around here. Starting to feel a bit more at home on the RT now, having ridden it for, well, yesterday we probably did, I don't know, four or five hours on the bike. It's quite a long day. Not quite so long today, but uh, yeah, getting used to how she feels and handles and some of the controls. It's a nice bit of kit, it really is. It was particularly good actually in the rain yesterday, just the amount of protection off the front of here. Particularly around the legs, I thought. You know, you tuck them in behind here and there's, you know, you're well protected with this thing. So it didn't feel like I was getting particularly wet. One of the things I do like with the RT over the GS, which I'm so familiar with, is the way that the handlebars are set slightly further back and lower. I've whinged in the past about my uh, shoulders and uh, my, the pain that I have in my shoulders. Well, this bike's a little bit easier on that because on the GS, your hands would be up here a bit more. And, uh, you know, on a long day's riding, that makes quite a big difference. I think on the Goldwing they're even further back. That's even even better in that respect, but the RT is a good sort of uh, compromise. I can see why it wins so many plaudits and so many touring bike reviews. A couple of things I'm not so sure of on the RT. Number one, this big TFT, even though BMW make amazing TFTs, I'm always saying they're the best in the game, and I think they are. But it's used the bubbles on this, by the way. It's still got the bubble wrap on or the protector thing. I feel loath to peel it off. I don't feel I'm worthy to do it on a new bike. But uh, but the TFTs are very clear on BMWs. But on this one, as you can see, it's, it's particularly massive. And, and it sort of dominates what you're looking at. I'm not sure I actually like that. I think I prefer the, the older RTs that had TFT and dials. I'm a bit old school when it comes to things like that. I do like the dials on the older bike. And then the other thing, which may be more significant, is your legs on the RT are that much more tucked up than they are on the GS. So on a longer ride, arguably the GS is a little bit more comfortable because your legs are a bit straighter. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the uh, GS outsells the RT by a massive margin when the RT on paper does kind of make sense if you're not going to go off-road. You would think, at least on paper. Well, this particular road, absolute corker, as ever. Didn't have the uh, camera on for most of it, but some lovely sweeping bends through here. Nothing too challenging, just nice to have a bit of fun on the big bike. Road surfaces are a little bit variable here in Tuscany. Not like, uh, not like Spain, where they tend to be very smooth. Here they, you know, sometimes they're smooth, but sometimes a little bit more bumpy as well. We're not talking UK potholey by any means, but uh, yeah, you have to kind of watch the surfaces. They do change from time to time. But the uh, suspension on the big Beamer soaks it all up, no problem at all. Well, that was a corking ride up to San Gimiano. We're just in the Omverons now, just coming into San Gimiano. Find ourselves a little parking spot. Have a little look around. Yeah. 
So the old town itself is just up to my left behind these uh, old walls. And uh, it can be a bit of a challenge to park here sometimes because it is, can be quite a touristy spot, but uh, Adrian knows all the best parts. I'm sure he'll have a, uh, a place in mind to stick 10 bikes. This will do. Right, let's go and have a look at San Jimmy. Right, so we've parked the bikes up. I've been rejoined by my glamorous wife, the beautiful Mrs. Flyer. <laughs> so how did you enjoy that? Oh, it was lovely. The ride up was beautiful. It's good. The, that, the that... views were absolutely stunning. And how was Adrian's riding? Absolutely great. Sort of took me away, round some bends, gave it a bit. I had a big grin on my face. Excellent. Yeah. I was tail end Charlie. Oh. It was good fun though. It was great fun. Nice ride. Anyway, go and check out some uh, medieval skyscrapers, shall we? Yes. Okay, so I'm here now with Adrian, the owner, proprietor of uh, Tuscany Motorcycle Tours. You probably remember it from the previous videos. We're in San Gimignano. What, I, I know you know everything about this place. What can you tell us? Well, San Gimignano is a medieval city, very old town, uh, famous for the towers. Yep. Uh, it's also known as the uh, medieval New York. Yep. Uh, because now we still have uh, 14 towers mm -hmm. that you can you can see, but in the in the old times there used to be 70. That's incredible. Yeah, and the story of the towers is because uh, in, in San Gimignano there was a tax on the on the property yep. uh, based on the land floor. So the people, to avoid paying too much taxes, they decided to build upwards. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's the story. And then uh, it became like a symbol of the city, and every important family, rich family from San Gimignano, they wanted to have the uh, biggest tower uh, as you would. Yeah, absolutely, fantastic. absolutely, brilliant. All right, thank you, Sam Gimiano. We're all uh, raring to go. A bit of a little tight squeeze to get out of here, but uh, I'm sure Kiko will do his thing and stop the traffic for us. Alrighty, very handy that. Right, next stop is uh, Volterra, another amazing medieval town. Now, I think the route there. Adrian described as the little Nürburg ring. So it sounds like it's going to be uh, a fun ride. Oh well, this scenery here is something else. Looking forward to this one. So I'm not tail end Charlie this time, which is nice. I've got, uh, in fact, we got Adrian with Carol on the back up front. And then it's uh, Jeff and Jackie from the US, North Carolina, I think on the bike ahead of me there on the Multistrada. And I'm thrilled to say that Jeff is actually a viewer of the channel. So hello Jeff if you're watching this back. And the reason he's here, he said, is because he saw us. Hello chaps on the GSs. Reason he's here is because he saw the uh, previous videos we made about four years ago. So, uh, so that's great that he's actually here now. Perfect riding weather now, 21 degrees. I've actually got shot of my uh, fleece that I was wearing forecast for the rest of the week doesn't look that great so we're making the most of today one thing I do like about this tour is it's not a endurance test it's got a nice leisurely pace in that uh, you know you ride somewhere stop have a good look around chill out ride to the next place and so on it works for me some of these tours can feel a bit like an endurance test when you're riding for hours on end and then you get somewhere and you're, you're there so late you don't get to have the chance to have a look around but uh, that is not the case on this tour it's very civilized not only that there's uh, plenty of time off as well i think uh, wednesday we've got a day off we're going to go and do some wine tasting that day we're not riding we've got uh, some fancy buses coming to pick us all up and take us to a winery so that's going to be very civilized another day we've got a uh, might be the same day I'm not sure we've got an English speaking uh, chef coming to teach us some Tuscany cooking 
so that should be fun so it's just it's not just all about the biking this one oh such a treat to be on dry roads oh look at that a white van up ahead excellent and he's helpfully turning off brilliant So uh, I reintroduce you to Adrian, the owner of Tuscany Motorcycle Tours, when we're in San Gimiano there. And uh, not only now does he have Tuscany Motorcycle Tours, but also a sort of sister company called Tuscany Motorcycle Rentals. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but clearly you can rent motorcycles from him as well if you don't want to do a guided tour. I guess that's how that works. And he's got a lovely collection of motorcycles now. GS's, Multistradas and so on. The perfect bikes for uh, exploring the Tuscan countryside if you are interested in finding out more I shall put some links below in the description of the video wow look at these views from up here now absolutely gorgeous typical Tuscan countryside villas cypress trees rolling hills beautifully green and lush absolutely stunning I'm loving the colors of the wild flowers in the hedgerows here in the banks Typically, just as I turn the camera off, it stops, but we had some amazing reds and yellows, maybe a few more here, but look at this, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. The light today is lovely. And we've just crossed the border from the uh, Siena region into Pisa. Apparently, according to the signs at least. This road has been absolutely epic. I assume this is the one that uh, Adrian referred to as the Neuerberg Ring Road because it's uh, it's just been a fast sweeping road with big flowing corners and a lovely surface as well. Great fun on this bike. Well, great fun on any bike, let's face it. A few cyclists doing it the hard way. Here we are, Volterra. Looking forward to having a little shifty around here. I don't know, but hopefully a little bit of lunch. Absolutely starving. What an epic ride that was up here though. Fantastic that road. Best road of the trip so far, definitely. Well, look at that. That is quite an approach. Popular spot with bikers. Let's go in here. That should do nicely. So after an incredible ride up what Adrian calls the uh, the Nuremberg, actually the local Nuremberg Ring. What do you call that that road? Yeah, the, the little Nuremberg Ring. Ah, excellent. <laughs> it wasn't quite as big as the real one, wasn't it? No. But an excellent ride, wasn't it? But I, it's a lot of fun anyway. I think that was yes. the best ride of the trip so far, wasn't it? Uh, so far, yes. But we but have better ones. Oh, we've got more to come. Haven't we? We've got more yeah. to come. So this is Volterra. What can you tell us about this? Volterra. Volterra is a very ancient city that. Uh, existed before the Romans, so yep. in the Etruscan times. Mm -hmm. uh, very beautiful and particular, also the, all the area around Volterra is particularly beautiful mm -hmm. in this period of the year. It's amazing. Yep. And it's also uh, famous for the Roman theatre you have. Okay. We are going later. Very, very, very impressive. Excellent. And do you know what it's called Volterra? Is there some electrical link? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Blew it. <laughs> it was doing so well. <laughs> Yes. 
So I've got Adrian off the hook. I've looked up Volterra in Wikipedia and it turns out there is no link to Mr. Volt whatsoever. He never visited. It turned out. We didn't say that in Wikipedia, but that's what I'm guessing. So Adrian has come up trumps with a Volterra fact. It turns out that all the stones here used to make the town are local stones. No great surprise there. But in years gone by, many millennia ago, this was a these stones were used in a seabed so when you look at some of the stones you can actually see shells inlaid within them let me show you one. Oh. Oh. so this section is the roman amphitheater you can see it down here and in fact, there is an amphitheater, as in a theater, just there, which is, this is the, uh, the city walls, is actually outside the city walls, but uh, amazing views here as well. Shame about the man with the strimmer. So that was the extremely cool Volterra. Lovely town, if you ever get the chance to come to Tuscany, thoroughly recommend a visit to Volterra. Quite a bit bigger than San Gimignano and a little bit less touristy but uh, no less good in fact arguably better anyway we're off now to our next Tuscan site which is a hilltop town I think called Monte Regioni oh here comes the ambulance so looking forward to a nice ride there not sure how long it is to Monte Regioni but I don't think it's too far and if the roads are like they were coming then we're in for a treat Check out that view as we leave Volterra. What stunning countryside. Okay, so we've only got about 9k now to Monte Regioni, the hilltop town. It's been an absolutely beautiful ride through again. Perfect temperatures, it's currently 21 degrees centigrade. Weather has held off today, it's been amazing riding, amazing places we've seen. And uh, Monte Regioni, or Regioni, is uh, the last stop of today. Let's go and check it out. And there's our first view of Monte Regioni up on that hill. I hope you can see that. That's where we're heading, I think. And here we are on the approaches to Monte Regioni. Let's go and park up, see what we can see. Right, so we made it to Monte Regioni, which is a popular little spot, isn't it? Yes. It's got a little square here. Great ride, that last one again. Oh, it was fantastic. Enjoy that. Coming out of Volterra, yes. Adrian, treat you well. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed yeah great yes. that was as good a ride actually as going in wasn't it on the, oh, even though yeah, it was a different road yeah it was brilliant great fun but loads of but and um, bends is the word i'm looking for it was excellent anyway we're in monte reggiano now which is part of the pilgrimage trail apparently other than that don't know much about it although we did come here some years ago and you found a shoe shop so we're going to try and find that again anyway i'll show you around she found the shoe shop Oh, Monte Reggiano, cracking little place. Well worth a little trip out if you're ever in the area. Right, thank you, Monte Reggiano. Last little uh, ride of the day, back to the villa, and uh, we're going to go buy some fuel. And uh, apparently, one of the roads back is in uh, Adrian's top three of all roads in Tuscany. So, should be quite a nice ride back. Okay, so we're fully fueled up and we're on the last leg of the day. And this road, Adrian has in his, uh, I think he said, in his top three of all roads in Tuscany for riding. So, uh, should be a great ride back. Certainly can't complain about the surface on it, that's for sure. Yes, it's a nice one.
surprising how you can hustle this big old RT around these bends. It really is surprisingly agile. Yep, I can see why Adrian likes this road. <laughs> it's an absolute corker. Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to, uh, I think it's day four of our tour here in beautiful Tussey. A little bit damp today, weather forecast not super duper, but uh, only light rain, so hopefully it'll be all right. But these spectacular views here at the villa never dampen our spirits. Check this out. Absolutely lovely. So uh, today, apparently, we're going to be travelling in what uh, Adrian reckons is some of the most beautiful areas of Tuscany. I've got the details. Let me tell you where we're going. Here we go, today we're going to ride the Val d'Occia, apparently. Uh, rich, amazing landscapes, probably the most beautiful area in Tuscany. Let's hope that uh, we get good views of it here today. Uh, we're off to Montalcino, where apparently the Brunello wine is from. Uh, then on to San Antimo, uh, Bagno Vignoni, which is famous for its thermal waters. And then we're on to Pienza, so it sounds like a great day. Apparently there is some amazing riding, so uh, going to get my kit on, get on the bike. Let's see what the day brings.